Hey everybody and welcome back. So in this video we're going to talk about wing washout and if you don't know what that is then sit back and we're going to uh, hopefully learn some stuff together. So um, I've gotten quite a few emails over the last couple of years about uh, airframe design and I just want to say I'm not an aeronautical engineer or anything but I've had a lot of my people and friends say no you are because of just all the stuff you've experimented and the stuff you've learned with. But I never went to school for anything. Actually, I dropped out of high school. But I digressed. So here's some things to think about. Um, when a wing flies, and I'm going to use a bunch of different airplanes here as examples, but when a wing flies, when it hits a critical angle of attack where it won't fly anymore, we know that we stall. And that angle of attack is where the airfoil keeps increasing where the relative flow of air is. And if it gets too high, then you get that, that separation over the airfoil, then the wing quits flying. We don't like to stall. And in real life, we don't like to stall unless it's intentional. Okay, I mean, I shouldn't say real life. In full scale, when you're in the airplane, you don't like to stall unless you're intentionally trying to spin or you're on purposely going up and doing some stalls, okay? And they're slowly starting to grow that there's people that don't like power on stalls. And I'm not gonna get into that too deep, but um, the best way to recover from a power on stall is if you hear your stall horn going on full scale, you just lower your nose, okay? It's pretty much textbook. Um, sorry for digressing again. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the wing design so that when the wing does stall, it's more predictable. So if you don't know what washout is, washout is where the actual, as the wing goes out, the trailing edge of the wing gets higher. It, it actually bends. And I'll show you that in a minute, and I'm going to exaggerate it a lot so you understand. But by making, if the root of the wing, let's say, is stalling at exactly 14 degrees or 13 degrees, whatever, let's just say for sake of argument, it's 14 degrees. But your tip airfoil is at 12 degrees. It's not stalling when the inside stalls. You always want the inside of the wing to stall first. That way you don't lose aileron control. You don't lose roll control. So if you were turning base to final, which is where most crashes happen in the radio control world, because we're not in the airplane, there's not a stall, stall horn, and we're pulling tight in that turn, if you see the airplane's nose start to drop a little bit, or you feel like you're really hauling back on the stick, and you have what's called a straight wing, no washout. When the wing quits flying, it could be the entire wing. Sometimes it's the inboard wing, sometimes it's the outboard wing. It just depends on how much rudder you got in the turn and all of that junk. But you don't want the whole wing to ever stall at once. What you want is the inboard to start stalling and you, you, you kind of can feel it. You can kind of see the airplanes not wanting to fly. So by having the outboard section with washout, that's really good. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to, so this is the Mosquito I designed about 10 years ago now. I still haven't built it yet just because it's, it's in the queue for all the other planes I'm trying to build. But it has one and three quarter washout in the wing, which means the trailing edge by the time you get the tips is one and a half degrees tilted versus the root and which is the most inner rib it's hard to see it in this here i'm going to zoom in on this for a minute so it's hard to see it but there's an, an inboard rib right here uh there's two inboard ribs that make up the center section of this part of the wing those are at zero i'm sorry let me stop and explain this a little bit deeper they're actually three degrees positive to the relative fuselage because all airplanes well most airplanes will have a positive positive incidence on the wing so the wings producing lift relative to the uh, direction that the airplanes traveling through the air so if we say okay the wings got a two degree or three degree positive that means that the the the, the tip is going to be two degrees less than whatever the zero is of the wing so if the, make sure I explain this right, if the wing had a two degrees positive angle of it, I mean incidence, at the tip it would be zero because of the washout. That's if you had two degrees. Now I have one and three quarter degrees. So mine would still be plus one half degree at the wing tip. 
So not sure if I'm explaining that, that you truly understand it. Uh, best way is when you look at just about any airplane, the wing has a positive incidence. Don't get incidents confused with washout. Okay, because um, most airplanes, uh, how do I explain this the best way? M most airplanes have a cruise speed. And at that cruise speed, they want to have the fuselage with a basic angle that the pilot can see where they're flying. Okay, most of the time at cruise speed, the fuselage might be maybe one degree up or it might be level, it depends on the aircraft. For that wing to produce enough lift to keep that plane in the air, a lot of times it will have anywhere from one and a half to three degrees of positive incidence. If you look at um, an airplane like the uh, A-10, it has quite a bit of a positive, positive incidence at the route where the wing connects to the airplane. Uh, the Viking, believe it or not, has a lot. It's hard to see it. There we go. It's hard to see it, but there is about three degrees of positive incidence. Don't confuse incidence with washout of the wing. And we're going to talk about washout in a minute. So let's get back to this screen. So before I get too deep into this, I want to talk about my sponsor, RTLFasters.com. Really awesome company. They've got all the bolts, nuts, servo screws, metric standard, uh, blind nuts, anything you could use in the RC industry, normally they will have, or I bet they have. So go to their website, buy more than $50 worth of product, use top secret code, top secret code DA30, and you'll get 30% off. So spend more than 50 bucks, get 30% off. It's a pretty cool deal. So this is the software, let me zoom in on this. This is the software I use called CompuFoil to design my wings. And if you look right down here, there is a washout part that I can design the washout into my wing. Now, this says outboard 15 degrees. That is insane, no airplane would have that. I've done that only for instructional purposes to show you what 15 degrees of washout would look like. So that's what 15 degrees of washout looks like. The trailing edge at the tip is 15 degrees um, higher or tilted, twisted than the root. Okay, when you look at it from the front, this is what it would look like. Okay, so that's washout. Don't confuse that with the wing's incidence with relationship to the fuselage of the airplane. So here is one where it is two degrees, which is more normal. Okay, I've seen washouts of two degrees. And when you look at that wing, you really can't see it. I mean, you might be able to say, yeah, it looks like the tip is tilted down a little bit. It is, but it's nothing like that 15 degrees. This is what it looks like from the front, okay? But when you build what I call the uh, build tabs, when I build a wing, I always have tabs that I cut out. So when I set the ribs on the table, I can build a straight wing. So if you had that two degrees, now you need to understand that this program is always going to keep a zero cord on the um, the airfoil, okay? So there is no, um, how do I say this? If, if you set the, in this program, you can tell your root cord to be at zero degrees is the way I always do it. Sometimes I might do it with what the incidence of the wing is going to be. Hope I'm not confusing you. But this is what the, the root cord looks like. And this, if you notice, the uh, if I were to set this flat on a table now, okay, the, the trailing edge would be higher. So let's go back. So here it's sitting flat on the table. Here, just because of the way the program works, it's showing the, uh, the rib at a zero degree of um, incidence, but if you laid it flat on the table, it would be putting your washout in for you, okay? And that's the reason I love CompuFoil. If I go to this type of setup where I'm gonna put the incidence that the wing would be on the airplane, okay, this is a two degree, if I laid this flat, then my tip would be flat at zero. 
because I have a two degree washout. Okay, so if you um, don't understand this, reach out to me and I, I would help you understand it more. But I, I want you to, I want you to understand that um, not every airplane would have this. Okay, if it's an aerobatic airplane, they won't have washout because when they fly upside down, they don't want the wingtips to be a positive versus the root being a zero because then the wingtips would stall first if you're upside down. Okay, this is basically for general aviation. Some warbirds have that washout in the wing. Keep in mind, in World War II, they were taking 18-year-olds, training them up to start, I believe, in a stearman. They went to the... Uh, 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 AT-6, and then they went toward whatever was going to be their fighter, you know, Corsair, Mustang, whatever. They still needed to design the high-performance airplanes to, to be a little bit forgiving. So there are some fighter planes that had washout so that the pilot could feel a buffet, okay, and know that, hey, I'm starting to stall this wing. I need to get off the, the stick. I need to relieve the back pressure. And... Um, uh, but jumbo jets and airplanes like that, those wings are designed very specifically for a cruise speed um, uh, and, and an efficiency to save fuel. Okay, a certain amount it can lift, a certain amount of drag. They have the stick shaker that tells you the wing stalling. They have a stick pusher, which means it can actually push the yoke forward. They have all kinds of devices to tell you the plane stalling. And it's not necessarily um, the best thing to have that washout in that wing because it's not the, not the most efficient way for a wing to fly. Now, the two degrees won't bother any model aviation or anything we do, okay? Um, but let's get back to the show for a minute. So, basically, if you remember my video, and if you haven't seen this, I did a video where I put yarn on the wings of my MSL-2 to show how it stalls. This wing was intentionally designed with the center of the wing being a little bit thinner airfoil. I did not have washout on this wing because I was trying to prove kind of a theory that the inside of this wing would stall first. And actually the inside of the wing did stall first in the videos. Um, I didn't do the right flight characteristics to see how it stalled. You can actually here see the inboard section of this wing is starting to stall while the, the uh, outboard section of the wings are flying fine and this is kind of demonstrating that that dreaded uh, if you were turning base to final stall uh, that could crash your airplane now I'm way up in the air and I'm only barely stalling the little inboard section of this wing here I'm actually pulling back on the stick a little bit too hard um, but this was a really fascinating video if you haven't seen it so on my YouTube go back and see it now what I want to talk about is different uh, airfoils for a little bit here is a, uh, um, an A7, and if you look at the root, you can definitely see there's a big positive angle of attack. But when you come out to the tip here, there is washout in this wing. And I've tried to find the documentation online, and I've looked at every scale drawing, I've looked at everything I can find, and there is a little bit of washout on this wing. Now, it's a carrier plane, they want it to be a little bit more forgiving, I'm sure. Uh, this thing was already a truck for the way it flew. Um, I could not verify if the Germans had washout in their wings. But you can definitely see here, this has a pretty high incidence. I think it's three degrees. But it looks like the wingtip is almost exact. Now, it could have been the person that modeled this 3D model um, just didn't get it right. But I can't find much online, and I'm sure somebody who knows this would put it in my YouTube, but it would surprise me it didn't have a little bit of washout because the Germans flew, built some really good airplanes. Um, again, <clears throat> can't find anything on the 190. I did find one article that talked about the design of the P-40 wing, and it showed washout in it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure if that's the way it ended up being built, but there were, I found a document where they're talking about the P-40 design when Curtis designed it, that Curtis had washout and wings. So, um, like I said, my mosquito is going to have washout around one and, one and three quarters degrees. 
and my T28 without a doubt is going to have that one and three quarter degree washout. It's just a good. It's 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 just a good way to build some safety into our airplanes. Um, but don't confuse the incidence of the wing with what the tip incidence is for washout because they're different. Okay, so I hope this makes sense, everybody. I try to keep this as layman's terms as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies have killed me this spring, so I apologize. My eyes are always watery. I'm coughing and hacking. I apologize. Um, <clears throat> but there's so much information out there on the internet that I disagree with. Okay, and all I do is ask everybody to go out and, and get informed on your own. I try to share my experiences and my own personal knowledge with what I have designed or I have found on the internet. And I normally hate to like, like finding that washout in the Curtis P40 because I found a document. I hate to talk about that stuff because that document could be wonky. Okay, but what I'm trying to do is get everybody to understand in layman's terms how this works. I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating sometimes when I do a video, like my cubed wing loading video. I got over 105 emails praising that video, saying you completely made sense. I completely get it. But two people were just furious and saying it was all BS and it didn't make sense and it was hogwash and all that junk. So I can't make everybody happy. But if you know, 110 or 105 or whatever the ultimate number was says rock on. It's awesome. It helped me understand it. It's a great tool. Then I think I've done some good. And when it comes to wing design, there is so much that goes into a wing design for full scale. But when we're building model aircraft, as long as it's got enough square inches, it's got enough power, and you've got the flying surfaces the right size, it most likely is going to fly. And I'm going to digress for a minute at the end of this video here. I had a friend build a beautiful airplane. I don't even want to say what the airplane was because uh, him and I have gone through it over the years because he left the hobby over this airplane and it, and it broke my heart. But he spent an enormous amount of time on an airplane and it did not have any washout on the wings. Um, it was very heavy, had a very thin airfoil, and the leading edge was very pointy. So the rounder your leading edge is, the more time it takes the air to decide which way I'm going to go before you stall. If you have a really pointy leading edge, the moment that angle attack gets critical, it will instantly decide and your wing quits flying. And I had flown his plane about five times for him and told him this is a lead sled, it's very heavy, enormous amount of time went into this airplane and it was detailed, there's something like 27,000 rivets like dotted with glue on it, just an immaculate airplane. Took it to the flying field, um, one of his friends said, let me fly it and destroyed the airplane. It crashed going from base to final, just augured it right in. And it, it broke my friend's heart. He left the industry. And it, he, if he's watching this right now, he knows how bad I want him back in the industry because he was a great builder. But sometimes we build airplanes that are lead sleds. And wash out in that particular instant probably wouldn't have saved that airplane because the person flying it just got it too slow, pulling back in the stick, landing it, and the plane stalled and fell out of the sky. But where washout may help you on a model aircraft is if you if you really are watching the airplane and you can see it sinking and you can feel that you got the stick way back and you're not getting into the power the ailerons will be the last thing to quit flying on that airplane so if the plane all of a sudden starts to quit flying you drop the nose and your ailerons are already flying okay keep in mind the moment the plane does anything wonky drop the nose I don't know how many people it says, oh, my radio browned out or my radio did this because I couldn't control it. When your ailerons aren't working, you won't be able to control your roll axis. And when you are turning an airplane and the airplane starts to turn and you're not controlling it, that's not your radio. That's your ailerons have quit flying. 
Now, if you're really good, well, I shouldn't say that. If you are a accomplished rudder pilot, just about any time you're moving your ailerons, you're moving your rudder a little bit. It's just instinct, okay? Instincts. If you are in a turn and the plane starts to roll uncommanded and you're doing opposite aileron, if you're doing opposite rudder, that rudder is a good thing because that rudder can upright your airplane. Okay, even though your ailerons have quit flying, your rudder can help save your airplane. I've had some pe some friends with really heavy airplanes dial in a little bit of trim from the L the rudder into the aileron. So anytime they're moving the ailerons, the rudder's moving a little bit. I personally don't like that much because it, it, you can end up in some cross control scenarios. But if you're stalling going from base to final and the plane starts to do an uncommanded roll and you've got rudder dialed into your ailerons and you're not a good rudder pilot or an accomplished rudder pilot, it might save your butt, okay? So I hope this helps everybody understand. All I'm trying to do is share with you what I've done in the way it works for me. And it's really unfortunate if you spend three years on an airframe that is contest quality, but you end up being basically just an enormous amount of weight on the airplane. It's not fun to fly. So having a little bit of washout may help you. Um, having a little bit of rudder dialed into your ailerons might help you. There's all these things. It's not just one. But this video was to answer what washout was because I've had quite a few people ask me about wing design and what is washout. So hopefully, um, if you've hung around this long, everybody, you, you must like what I'm saying. So please like and subscribe. Please share my videos too. I'm trying to get my videos out there. I, I probably get two or three emails a week saying, I had no idea you had this YouTube channel. This is fantastic. And I, I, it just thrills me to death that, that you all like this type of content. So I'll see you next time. Um, I have quite a few videos coming up. As I said, I'm doing a series on the C-130, the series on the B-36, the MSL-1, and the MSL-2. In all, there's going to be 24, 25 videos on that. Um, the next design type video I'm, I'm going to do is actually about wings again. And it's the thickness of the airfoil and what it means to me. The leading edge, like I just mentioned a little bit. Um, I've already done one on the size of your flying surfaces and all that. You can go find that on my YouTube. Okay. But the next kind of design one is going to be about wings. Okay. So thanks for watching. Rock on. Uh, be safe. Take care of yourself. Have fun. Make sure you take a kid flying. You've heard me say before, flying model aircrafts prevents mass murders. And if you want to know why, when you prop a kid up all day in these shoot em videos and they're murdering people or they're driving cars over people or they're climbing up on a crane with machine gun and they're sniping people, all you're doing is teaching kids to be mass murderers. When they get into model aviation, they learn physics, they meet cool people, they learn how to use their hands to build with glue and sticks and stuff like that. It, model aviation is so cool for kids, so please get kids involved. Okay, rock on. See you next time. Stay safe and have a great day. See you.